education uh, level. It's uh, universal basic education uh, is a government policy on education that allows every Nigerian child to have access to free education for the first nine years of schooling. And uh, art education, or art as a course, is uh, part of the programs that this uh, Nigerian child is supposed to be exposed to. However, we all know the problems that art have been facing in not only Nigeria, but all over the world. Whenever government wants to cut on spending, the first program that is canceled or removed is usually art. Why that is so, we don't know, because um, everybody accepts art. Art is the first language that every child speaks. The first communication with every child is either you sing to that child, you dance to the child, or you make sounds with your voice to the child. And this is how children learn. The first uh, activity carried out by a child is an art because they start by, in most cases, pouring their food down and using their hand to make circles in this food. And uh, this is the way art starts. But we don't seem to respect the position of art all over the world, even though we all know that it's a means of communication with our children. Uh, in academia, we use art not just for art's sake, but we use art to teach other courses. In the beginning, in the early years of elementary school, you cannot teach a child without using photographs for communicating with that child. And in that process of communication and using art, you're actually exposing the child to art. Yet, we still find that enough respect is not given to art when it gets to the uh, activities of, uh, of education. We know that art itself is a means of expression, is a means of communication, is a, is a means of passing on our culture from one period to the other. We also know that art serves so many purposes. I will give an instance. If you look at our surroundings today, the whole world, there are buildings. We didn't, the world did not begin or the world did not start with all these buildings. These buildings came about as a result of some people's uh, efforts. People who have studied uh, architecture put up these structures. Yeah, they do not put up these structures without consideration for aesthetics. We have uh, urban and regional planners. They do not uh, come up with these structures. They do not plan the, our cities without consideration for art in terms of looking at what belongs where, what will serve which purpose, what do we really need as a people. And uh, art itself begins to form our culture as a people. It formulates how we live within our communities, our dressings, our buildings, our furnitures in the homes, our cooking utensils, or everything we do really. That is why some people say art is a way of life. Art actually begins the day a child is born and ends into death because even the coffins that people are buried in, are, I mean, talking about aesthetics, they're expressing aesthetics and they're describing the culture, the community of that person. As such, uh, we find that art is in everything that we do. Art has uh, many branches. I believe our talk today is going to be based on, mostly on talking about visual art. And visual art has painting, sculpture, ceramics, textile design, um, glass design, furniture design, cake design, of recent, it has extended into video art, where things like Nintendo and all of these things are created. We also know that art covers performing arts, which has to do with theater, music, drama, 
And of course, we're not forgetting the liberal arts, which has to do with literature, poetry, uh, history, writing, philosophy, psychology, sociology. These are all branches under liberal arts. And all of these come under the very big umbrella of art. Now, art education itself is the art of uh, teaching of art. That is what art education is, the teaching of art. Some people don't believe that art should be taught. Some feel that it is mostly either inherited or it is, um, it is something that has to do with talent. At the same time, we, have, we, have, we all know and we've read that art is, uh, I mean, creativity itself in art is 10% uh, talent and 90% uh, um, uh, hard work. However, the hard work in most cases is dependent on the teacher. The art teacher determines a lot of times the outcome of the student. I have seen a lot of my colleagues come into the classroom and just um, um, put the topic on the board and without explaining anything, they just ask the students to, to go on. But art requires that we teach, that our, our teachers get trained in the process of teaching, in the methodology of teaching, in how best to actually teach the subject. Because if you don't teach it well, you do not expect that students will have interest. We do not expect that your students will actually advance it because this is a career path that needs to be advanced by teaching. However, of recent, uh, researchers are agitating that art should not be categorized as uh, a course that students take voluntarily because, I mean, it's like learning English language. We learn English language at the primary and secondary school, not because we want to become English major people. We learn um, physical and health education, not because we want, to be, we want to go to the Olympics. We learn them because they are part of the necessity of the growth of the human being. As such, art has become something that needs to be learned. Because if truly art is helping us to think outside the box, then it means we have to, we have to learn it and we have to spread it in all the classes. And we have to accept it as a very, very core aspect of, uh, of learning because of the benefits that art has. There are so many benefits. We cannot begin to mention all the benefits that art has, but we know that um, the training of art requires that um, we train the, uh, the skill, the motor skill of the child. And uh, the motor skill is necessary as a foundation for every aspect of learning. Even if you want to become, who do you want to become? A surgeon, an accountant, a lawyer, whatever you want to become. If you are not able to think outside the box, which is the definition of the artist, it means all you are going to be doing will be repeating what has been done before. And um, when you repeat, we know what that means. It just it becomes a sort of red, red tapism. There will be no progress. All the developments we've had in the world are all based on input from artists, Wh whichever development you want to think about. If it is carrying the Sputnik to the moon, it requires that the artist be part of it. If it is the wristwatch on your hand, it requires the, that the, somebody thinks out, outside the box. Whoever thinks outside the box, of course, is an artist. Our mobile phones that we're using, when they came about, we all knew what they were. They were quite big. And today, they become micro. There is no way you could have achieved all of those without the input of an artist, whichever way. Whether you're a learned artist or you're somebody who, are, who is self-taught or you're somebody who have decided to actually think outside the box. By thinking, sorry, I need to ask, am I being heard? Are people hearing me? Yes, ma'am. Except for the fact that there is another uh, sound. audio coming from sound coming from dying that gets put one of the one of your devices on or so probably okay. Radio. okay I'll get it down okay please can you put down the TV there please okay thank you very much man 
All right, thank you. Thank you. Sorry that I went on without actually confirming if you could hear me. <laughs> we could oh. actually hear you, but just all right. Like, okay. All right, all right. Thank you very much. Very so well. we all know that um, art is necessary. If you're a lawyer and you cannot think outside the box and you cannot make a presentation that is different from what you made yesterday, you wouldn't have been achieving anything. And as such, researchers are all clamoring for it, that art should be included. I know in Amadou Bello University, where I have been, uh, we have students from medicine coming to learn art. They come to learn art teaching. They also come to learn art practicum. Because without practical, I mean, if you're a surgeon and you need to carry out surgery, you can see what is happening today regarding surgery all over the world. The correctional surgery that is being done now, I mean, they can actually remold a whole person and uh, change the person's face, change some abnormalities. It started with helping accident victims. But today, models are all going in. In Nigeria, the figure eight thing is the rainy thing among the females. Everybody wants to have figure eight and they go for surgery to get that done. So, uh, and uh, of course, there are mistakes because uh, those who did not learn any art and they are carrying out surgery, they do surgeries that at the end of the day, it becomes a problem. You now need a lot more money to actually correct the surgery that you've done. So creativity really in art is in everything and it should be encouraged. It should be encouraged at all levels. Everybody should learn it. It's, it's actually, um, aside from the physical development of the child, it has value in, in, the, in terms of uh, actually improving the child's relationship with other children in the classroom. Because art teaches empathy, art, art encourages empathy. You share materials and this makes you a team player. It helps you throughout your life. It doesn't just end in the art classroom. As the child progresses, the child learns team spirit, learn to work among a group and learn to be part of a, a group that is developing. It also has a social development of recent, we all know with the advent of Facebook, then came the IG Instagram, then um, Twitter and so many others. Uh, these are all what I, I categorize as creativity. I put them under creativity because my belief is that people who develop this have thought outside the box. We have some people dropping out of school. Of course, you drop out of school, it doesn't mean you've gone to sleep. Dropping out of school means retraining yourself with some core values and doing it your own way. Because now you don't have to sit in the classroom and learn courses that you don't want. You can actually select those things that you want. And today, even on Instagram, there is, there is virtually nothing you cannot learn on YouTube on your own. And those that you want to pay for, you can pay for them for special skills. They are all skill development. And when you develop skill, it comes under the umbrella of, uh, of art. It's also, uh, I mean, you develop cognitively in the field of art, uh, not just by learning to paint, by learning to, to sculpt, it's used as therapy. We use them as therapy. It is not for uh, children who are not brilliant only, because you actually need brilliancy. You need to be brilliant to actually survive in the world of arts today, because um, the world is moving very fast. It's jet age, and for you to belong, it means you have to develop cognitively, and you are not living out your emotions as well. The only thing is that. Um, if you do not want to be a mathematician, you can study, you can come to art. You survive in some certain aspects of art. I know certain aspects still deal with a lot of mathematics. For instance, if you're a graphic artist, you need a lot of calculation because graphics is for precision. It applies in other areas as well. Sculptors, they use a lot of precision. They do a lot of calculation. The size of the head to the body, you have to know it. The size of the thorax to the lower abdomen, to the leg, to the thigh and all of that. These are all calculated for precision. So in art, we also have a lot of cognition. We, are, we have a lot of uh, cognitive uh, development. Art also helps emotionally. Uh, for instance, there are kids in your class. They don't talk, 
they do not want to participate in what is happening in the class. It's not because they are not intelligent. It's because probably they would rather express themselves uh, through drawing. By my, um, I have a magazine that I call that is called Art and Artist, and I also practice a bit of journalism. Sometimes I have to interview some artists, and some of the artists I've interviewed, they've made me realize that they didn't just become artists. They became artists because they found themselves to be able to express themselves better in the field of art than in other areas. So sometimes you have students in your class who will not say a word from beginning of the class to the end. Of course, you know that such students, if encouraged, can become very, very good uh, artists. So you find that art helps people who are generally a bit laid back to actually express themselves and they actually excel in, in the practice of, of art. Um, art has a very strong effect on other subjects. Let's take, for instance, um, teaching of arithmetic in the early stages of learning. You find that for you to describe, let's take, let's take shapes, for instance, shape. You want to teach a, a primary one child shapes or nursery three. You want to teach them, uh, sorry, nursery one, or what do they call the, the higher level of nursery class? whether it's three or one, you want to teach them the different shapes. Um, it will be necessary that you actually show them the, the shape you are referring to. So what would you use to do that? You can't use formula at that stage. You can only use the visual. You can only use the visual. Is it that you use the visual of the actual objects that you've made yourself, or you use the visual of the actual object made by somebody else but you actually need, you need to have the real object to show to this child, to help that child to know. So in the showing of this object, what are you doing? You are using art. So I, I laugh when some people say they are not teaching art in their school or they're not using art. It's not possible. You can only teach the other subjects at the primary school level without using pictures, photographs, illustrations, visual aids. These are all art. Yet, I've heard some state governors saying they don't want art in their state. It means they don't want people who think outside the box in their state. They do not want, they abhor development in their state. Because science alone cannot, cannot develop anybody. It is science encapsulated in art that becomes innovation, that becomes novel, that becomes a found item that can move the society forward. If, if I sit down here and I keep formulating that, okay, when the air pressure is so-so, when the speed is so-so, uh, uh, aluminum can move at so-so speed, what will that be if I do not construct the aluminum into something that can move? And this is how aircraft came about. This is how shuttle, whatever, anything at all that is developed to fly must involve a design that will compel the science to move. So you find that engineering alone, and that's why Nigeria, we are where we are today. I'm sorry to say, I know I'm being watched from everywhere, not just in Nigeria, but you find that Nigeria, we keep making so much noise about um, um, science and technology. So where has it taken us? What have we produced? What can we show for it? It's because we decide not to carry along our art. Without the art, the science will remain in name science and it will be made up of formulas. This is my belief, I, I stand to be corrected, but I mean, imagine, I had wanted to show a video here this night, but I can reference it and people can check it out. It is Gaga, it is a, it is a sculptural piece. It's at the airport in Denmark. Is it Denmark, I think? It has a name, have you forgotten the name now? This sculptural piece welcomes you and have a tete a tete with you at the airport when you come in. It can joke, it can tell stories that makes people laugh. It's a sculptural piece, but we all know that it has been infused with technology and that's why it's doing that. The whole AI that is being studied in the world today requires art to actualize. If you create a robot in formula only without actually molding, creating, sculpting out the robot, um, what will happen? Nothing. But if we create a robot and we actually um, we 
We partner it with art. It becomes uh, something more approachable, something more useful, something that can serve our society, something that can benefit the people within our community. If we look at art and our society, any society that dismisses its uh, art, which represents its culture, cannot develop. It will only be a consumer nation. We cannot throw away our culture. We cannot throw away our art. If we do that, there will be no development. We will only consume and we'll be consuming. Sorry. Okay. We'll be consuming uh, what comes from the occidental countries because they have encouraged their art. They have spent so much money developing art to where their art is today. And uh, I would like to agitate what they did over there was to form pressure groups like what we are doing this evening. They come up with pressure groups, advocate, advocate uh, groups, and they pressurize uh, government. And not only government, I mean, we have uh, so many companies in Nigeria that can come to our aid. There's so much money outside there, outside Nigeria, in other parts of the world, that could actually come into the aid of art. In, in uh, Nigeria here, I know that it's only government money that we spend in schools. But we need more than government money in the schools. We need money from interest groups. But it's only when we form, when we have a formidable group that can pressurize them. They're not going to listen to us. They're not going to try to help us. Art requires a lot of money. And that's probably the reason why some governments are removing it from their curriculum. And because it requires so much money, People only want to take care of courses that are cheap for them to run. Because I'm sorry to say, government also sometimes actually cheat the, the citizens because they would rather take like a thousand students in one course and collect so much school fees from them and take a few for art because art requires a lot of material and the government does not want to spend money on those materials. But we need to put our, our heads together and actually think of a way forward because we know that art is very, very important to us. It is very necessary. We need to create people who are willing to live within themselves. We need to create citizens who are ready to carry on after we are gone. And the only way to do that is to inculcate art into them, to teach them empathy through art, to help them to think outside the box, to help them not to accept the status quo, but to think of better ways of getting things done, especially within the African setting. Because right now, we have seen what is happening all over the world. Mere COVID-19 that is testing us everywhere. In some parts of the world, everywhere is littered with wash and uh, bases, automatic, that you put your hand under, the soap comes out, you put your hand under the water, and water comes out. Where in Nigeria can we boast of that? I am in, I live in Abuja, and the few places I've been to in Abuja, yeah, what I've been seeing are buckets that people put outside. So you can imagine even transmitting the disease, the bucket can help you because there's a tap on the bucket. You touch the soap, you now touch the tap to wash your hand. Then after washing, you touch the tap back again to close it. Would you be returning what you have washed away? Are you not returning it when you touch the tap? The next person comes and does the same. This is what litters the whole of Abuja, where I have been. I've also been in a few places in Zaira. It's the same thing I'm seeing. And I know that people have designed, people have come out to, to, to design so many automatic uh, tabs that you can actually just, with sensors, you just put your hand under the soap, it sensitizes, it drop, put a drop in your hand, you put your hand under the tap, it drops. But because I don't know who we are in this country, I don't know what kind of persons we are. We really do not, we don't approach, we don't accept change quickly until there's, there, there are bigger problems that we cannot cope with before we begin to look. And that will be just like medicine after death. And this is what we need. We need to have a total turnaround of our brain in this country. And this can only start 
from the elementary stage. Because you cannot change an adult. You can't change somebody who is already formed. If we want to fight corruption, as the president is saying, I don't want to make it political, but we also need to go there. We need to only take care of those children. We need to care for them. When we were in the elementary school in those days, materials were available for art. When it is art time, we go to the art studio. Materials were available. Our teachers give us paper, they give us gouache, they give us watercolor, they give us paints. We play around with them, we experiment, and this is what kept us, kept us in the art. But today, a child does not have chair to sit in a classroom, and we're talking about paint. I encourage my students, in most cases, when they are going on teaching practice, within them, they, they actually contribute money to buy paper and pencil to take to those schools where they're going to have their teaching practice. This does not all go well. I believe it's the same thing in science and all the other courses, but it's only pressure groups that can sensitize government about what is actually going on out there. We are not building our tomorrow today. And that is why when there is crisis, it becomes escalated because people who are supposed to uh, be in the field of art are just out there roaming. They have nothing to do. Even America used it during their revolution. When they couldn't cope anymore, their president decided that let's look towards the art. A pressure group that started decided to ad advise the government to look towards art, and they did. And, the, and that was when music, uh, sports, and all of those escalated, and it has really helped, and it has put America on the page of the world. And I think that is what Nigeria should do so that we can actually move forward. We have so many people with talent. They are there. We see them every day. We meet them at bus stops displaying uh, tractors that they design, they need encouragement. But where is it coming from? It's not coming from anywhere. I don't want to veer away too much, but as art teachers, I want to mention a few key areas that I feel we as art teachers can actually look into. Because art stimulates imagination, so we can use it. We can, it is not right to draw for your students and say, copy what I've drawn. Or say, okay, let me give you an example. You are not allowing their imagination to soar by doing that. It's, it's not the best. You need to explain to your students what you are teaching them, why you are teaching them. Make those points. Let them feel a sense of belonging in the classroom. Don't just put the topic on the board and, and go away and ask them, draw a man and then you disappear. No, you need to stay with them. You need to tell them what you expect to see. It's like giving them the marking scheme before teaching the course. I practice this a lot, and I know that it brings out the best from my students. Once I tell them what I'm looking for, this is what I'm looking for from this assignment. You find that they go and attack them. So when you mark them down, the tendency they come to you, they query you, they question you. How come I'm scoring this? This is what you ask us to do. You gave me a, a scheme, and I followed this scheme. Why is, why is my result this way? It helps you, the teacher, as well. When you get to marking, you know that these are the points that you want to actually see in their work. Because art encourages observation. So you find that it appeals to the inner self. Art teaches you to be able to use your... When I was learning in, in Ahmad Bello University during my undergraduate, I had one teacher called Tyrone Jetta. Whenever he comes to the class, he says, open your inner eye. At that time, we used to laugh that what does it mean by inner eye? But with time, I've also taught inner eye to my students. Art encourages you to be observant. Art helps you to open that inner eye to see what the common man will not see. So this is what the teacher is teaching. You're, you're, you're only helping that student. You're making way for the student to actually open that inner eye. It's the only way that their results uh, could be meaningful to they themselves, meaningful to you, and meaningful to their parents. Our students, their parents are usually the greatest problems. A lot of parents come and say, why is my child taking art? I don't want my child to take art because I want my child to be a medical doctor. I want my child to be a lawyer. I want my child to be this, to be that. Because most people do not even know what art is all about. Because they themselves, did either, either they did not learn art in school or they, didn't, they did not get good teachers. Because like I said earlier, your teacher actually makes you have interest in art. It is only the teacher that can show you that you're solving a problem by studying art. It is only the teacher that can help you know the richest people in the world who are artists, who are actually enjoying what they are doing 
and at the same time they are solving problems and at the same time making money. And because art encourages uh, self-esteem, it gives the learner that confidence. But it can only come from you, the teacher. We always talk about mentoring. But how many people are we really mentoring? When we say mentoring, the real sense of mentoring, how many people will you give your own chance to? The opportunity that came for you, how many people will you say, you, why don't you come and go, come and go to, to China? They have this opportunity, go and be there. Some of us are very selfish. When everything comes, it stops on the table of the teacher. I see your students who has been slaving and learning shouldn't have that opportunity. Let us spread it. Some of us have attended 20 conferences that can spread to other people. Let's open up. Now, the, the final thing I want to talk about is the fact that in the uh, Occidental countries, art is used to relieve stress. In Africa, I don't know anywhere where you can go to to go and relieve your stress by practicing art. In most cases, we all learn art in classrooms. And the reason for this is because we, we are not collaborating. We don't collaborate. We only face ourselves and we only try to do everything for ourselves by ourselves. We all know that painting can be very relaxing, sculpture can be very relaxing, photography can be very relaxing, and it can improve well-being of people. So the more we talk about it, all these are our senators. I've not heard that they've invited anybody to come and share art with them in their Senate, in the Senate House or in the Senate Chambers, whether privately or publicly. I've not heard that. Yet they need us. Probably because they don't know they need us. We need to let them know that they need us. On our programs, we need to invite more people. Not just artists, but let's open it up. Let's invite people from the general public. Let them get to know. We need government to pass a law that every government office must have an art work in their office. Every government room should have an art piece. This will create more jobs for all of us. It also makes some parents that don't know what artists do, we get to know that, oh, this is what artists do. If you go to any bank in Nigeria, any bank branch, what you are going to see is you see the president's uh, picture, you see the governor's picture, and then you see the bank manager's picture. What are those pictures doing there? They are not supposed to give anybody uh, any, uh, they don't relieve stress. They don't look beautiful. They don't look appealing. They don't say anything. They don't keep me engaged. They don't, I don't converse with Wari's picture. What will I be asking? But if I go in there and I see Dr. Adele's uh, sculptural piece there, I can get, even if I have to spend two hours in the bank, I may not feel it because I'll be engaged interrogating that picture, not just me, but everybody. Well, we need a group like ours. We are the ones that will tell government. Government does not know. Our Nigerian government is there to make money and fight corruption, according to them. And that fighting of corruption is a forever thing. While they are fighting corruption, our children will be growing older and learning how to be corrupt themselves because we have not exposed them to art. We have not exposed their parents to what art is all about. I'm very sorry. I told uh, Mr. Shebu that if he doesn't stop me, I will go on and on. Uh, I would like to... <laughs> I was <laughs> I like to stop about that. it. Okay, sir. Okay, man. <laughs> Thank you very much. But I was actually enjoying, uh, I, but I wish we have like two hours or more for this lecture. I was personally, I was enjoying it. And I believe it is the same, it's the same thing for everyone listening to you tonight, man. That was wonderful. That was, but it is a great honor to have you tonight, man. Thank you so much. Now, now I'm going to, we are going to open floor for people to ask questions. There is a hand icon on your screen. If you tap on your screen, you will see a hand icon, so we can we can we can we can uh, click on that hand icon so that we can take questions from people. But if your if your camera is on too, because I can't see everybody at the same time. I think I am only limited to nine to see nine participants at the same time. So so if your is if your uh what's it called your camera is on, then I can you can also use that to raise your hand. But it is better to use the and icon on our screen. Now we, we want to take questions, contributions to what we have had tonight. The topic we actually look at is uh, values of art education. 
we started that last week and we have also created a survey online right now we have about 62 uh, responses and uh, we are looking we are hoping that it will it will increase by the next uh, art educator anger our next meeting so now we are collating yeah, sure. that so that we can share yeah, that sure. with everybody so that we can share that with yeah. everybody and then if you have okay we can take uh, responses i can see dr adenley's hand dr adenley you can go ahead sir you can unmute yourself and ask and make your yes sir dr adenley okay good evening everybody uh, good evening, good evening, doctor. Hello? Good evening, Hello? doctor. I can hear you. Uh, good evening, ma. Yes, doctor. Uh, we thank God for the, the lecture. The, the, the speech has been fantastic, and that's why uh, Mr. Shebun did not want to to time. <laughs> We really enjoy it. Yes, yes. Has been an expository one. Um, I want us to discuss on this issue because it is not really that um, government is not patronizing art, but they decided. You know, it is like use and dump, the way I want to call it. When I say they patronize art, I mean they know. The, sort of, they know. The, it is through the appendages of art. Because there's no body that is not encountering, that is not engaging art. Whether you use it, you produce, or you use it as an object, as material, you will engage it every day. Now, you see the appendages, the, 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 the other areas which are artisans. You talk about painting, you have a house painting there, you have people that are doing, you talk about graphics, you see road sign, artists there, those who do, doing, those doing stickers and all these things. They engage, they use them every time, weekends for party, this one for that one, and maybe because those ones are available at a very cheaper rate, we talk about carpentry. The products of in every home, there's no way you cannot you will not have furniture. It's an aspect of sculpture. And how do we now, because government has been enjoying all those ones, I mean everybody, not government alone, politicians, um, teachers, scientists, we enjoy all those products without a recourse to the to the to this substantive cost that is that is um, producing all those aspects of skills. So how do we now make them to realize that and, and bring them to the to the round table that you you remove art from school when we're in, in primary school there is technical college uh, vocational and technical they call it vocation. when these people are coming from school you will see them with their furnitures they are bringing from the school, you will see them with furniture, and those ones, they, I mean, many or majority of them will have retired now. I don't think we will have any one of them in service anymore. And that was when we have good, good skill or artisans that are really knowledgeable. So now, what do we do? Because we have these skills here and there on almost every profession, every aspect of art, we have them outside, and they enjoy them every day. Yet they close eyes to the art as a profession, art as a cause. And anything like you have said, any little difficulty, they drop art. They want to provide money, they look for Nollywood. They want to do this one, they look for that one. What do we do? So that's the question, man. Doctor. Hello? I, I guess um, he will, he is muted. Doctor Dijani, okay. you are muted, ma. Okay, we can also sorry, take. Sorry. Okay. <laughs> can we take okay. more questions? Then we answer them together. Uh, okay. Yes. Yes, ma. Okay. Uh, we can use the hand icon, and uh, 
we can use the hand icon that we will be called upon to ask our question or make contributions. Right now, we can't get any any hand raised using the hand icon now. I'm expecting us to just do that so that we can take our questions. We don't have much time to spend tonight. And um, OK, probably I'll just call name. Uh, Dr. Shek Golude. Sir, we can unmute your mic and speak, sir. Thank you. I thoroughly enjoyed the bits that I came in and I was making some notes for myself. It's a very clear presentation. Uh, Dr. Khadija Tijani, you did a very good job and you used words to illustrate some of the things that um, I think we need to highlight when we're talking about art. The fact that it enhances and helps explain technological development better than technology alone is just one of the main things that I think we should be promoting. And the fact that you cannot um, have a society that doesn't realize the value of using art as part of leisure and the fact that it helps us to relieve stress. You know, those are some of the things that we don't always talk about when we talk about art. Um, sometimes we focus only on what we can, you know, see as sculpture or painting, but we don't talk about the effect. So I'm glad to hear you talk a lot about the effects tonight. And I just, you know, I'm thrilled that I'm here. So thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Okay, can we have more people? Okay, Mr. Ladimeji, can you please unmute your mic and speak oh. now, sir? All right. Thank you so much. Uh, greetings to the whole house. What? Um, the our speaker for tonight has really done justice to this uh, course at hand, and when I I was uh, enjoyed the whole uh, uh, points being raised and then the kind of uh, explanation given in some areas. Uh, but in some area, in as much that I mean, in line with uh, the submission of uh, our presenter tonight, I still want to draw our attention to a particular clause. You know, where there is a will, there is always a way. Uh, in the case of uh, saying that art uh, drops money more than any other thing, I want to disagree with that because the amount being expended on science is so much to the extent that uh, the, 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 the place science as if is the best, is, is, is all that we need. And meanwhile, if a scientist carry out a research and there is no physical uh, uh, housing that we carry whatever research they have done, is it possible for them to uh, showcase anything to anybody? The mechanical, every aspect of a life, you know, involves art. But the major problem is that I want to believe in this part of the world, our leaders are yet to know or to see the reason why they should support art. Uh, even the curriculum that we are using now, I want to believe is to some extent uh, if not obsolete, but not up to the standards that we are looking for. Uh, you mentioned something the other time that the medical students came to your department to borrow uh, art courses in order to enhance their profession. That is how it should be. But um, art is being isolated as if it's not part of any other thing. And this is a big uh, mistake on the part of our education uh, planners, or those who are in charge of curriculum planning. And the, the, the most uh, uh, painful thing uh, was that each time they want to review curriculum, 
those who are going to implement that curriculum will not be carried along to equally contribute their, their, their inputs to what and what is necessary to be included in that curriculum. These are some of the problems that we are facing. And at the same time, I want to believe that um, I, 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 in as much as I, I'm not even familiar with any politicians, but I want to believe that some of us in the, on, on this platform know one or two things, uh, one or two senators or somewhere else that we can equally approach and equally saddle him with this responsibility of making uh, a kind of uh, niche for himself by raising this issue of importance of art at the house so that at the end of the day, he will be the one to champion it. And when the thing is given the expected uh, dividends, his name will equally be written in gold. I want to stop at this point in time. Maybe later on, I will still contribute more. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Mr. Oladimeji. Okay, can we have more people to, okay. If you, probably some might be joining us using their mobile device. I rather, I was trying to check on the, on the second connection that I have, the mobile device. I realized that it might be pretty difficult for people to actually have the uh, ant icon there. But what you just do that, because I check on my own and I can't find it. But on my, lap, on my laptop, I have it there. I have the hand icon there. So because of that, if you want to speak now, you can just unmute yourself and speak. If you want to, if we are, if you want to contribute, you can unmute yourself and 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 speak. Want to take more questions before we we ask um, Dr. Tijani to respond to that? Okay, I'm sorry. Hello. Okay. Yes. Okay. Uh, good evening to. All. Thank you, ma'am. This is my first day of joining this program, and I'm highly, highly happy to be part of this program. I'm contributing from Ghana. I thought our case was in isolation, not knowing Nigeria is also having the same. Art, as I see it, I don't know how we can come together that the curriculum developers will see the need for us to have this art curriculum across, not just being elective, but for it to be all areas of the art and our education levels, so that every ongoing student will have something to do with art. Mom, I'm grateful for being part of this program. God bless you. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. Amsa. I am very sure Ms. Uh, Dr. Tijani is taking note of those uh, responses. Then we have more than Dr. Tijani will respond to that. So um, I guess Mr. Sulika, you have something to say to contribute to that. Mr. Abidin Sulika, you can unmute yourself, sir. You are muted, sir. You need to unmute yourself. You click on your on your screen. You see the mic. Then you un you click it again to un to unmute yourself. Mr. Asuluka, you are speaking, but you you are muted. Okay. Uh, can we have another person? Um, why we are waiting for uh, Mr. Joseph from Brazil mm -hmm. join us late? Okay, Mr. Hello. Tony, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. Please. Good evening. Good evening, everybody. I am grateful to be here. This is my first time of coming in, and uh, I am glad I'm part of this. I've been an uh, artist and an art teacher for a while now. I have uh, a question in my mind that I've been asking myself and I've been seeking a forum that could address it. And I think this should be a perfect place to discuss that. Uh, from the point I started teaching arts in secondary school, 
I noticed one thing that was prevalent, just like the speaker was uh, trying to talk about. I discovered that the students who are in secondary school are encumbered with lots of uh, things about history. It's not as if history is not part of the game. And you have a volume to teach on history. But I also was privileged to take uh, the students on Cambridge. I discovered that the principles of art and even history that might be exposed to you is just leading you to producing the art during exams. We had three papers, they had three papers, and our own will be having two practicals and then one theory. But there are three papers of practicals all through. And then you see that the theory that we are going to take as one over three of the papers that they're going to take during exams is likely going to Mr. Tony, you are muted. You need to unmute yourself. Mr. Tony, can you hear you me now? Muted. Okay, yes. Can you, can you hear right. me now? Yes, okay. go ahead, sir. I, I don't know where you lost me. I don't know where you lost me. You are talking me, but about saying... the IGCSE. The IGCSE. Uh -huh. Okay. Uh -huh. So, the uh -huh. I was looking at... Just like the other speaker was... Uh, the other person that uh, contributed was saying something about us making a kind of a representation at the uh, National Assembly or something like that. I think it's time to do that. We, are, we will be part of what is happening at the curriculum development so that we will not have this volume of theories and then still have an equal volume of practical or even more to take. I just discovered that you have to keep rushing over issues. The expression that our speaker was trying to make about making the students relate to what they are doing seem to be a, a bit lacking because you have to rush to finish all of this. So if we can actually make a representation of that and see how we are going to make adjustments so that the expression, because if art is defined as a piece of self-expression, we don't need to force them to remember a lot of histories that may not have relationship to what their expressions are supposed to carry. A little bit of history is okay because they need to understand where they are coming from. But having all of those packed in the background and then you have to struggle with all of that. And in three years, you just discover that you have had up to 90% of history and probably 10% of practical to do because you have to cover all of that for them to pass exam and pass well. I think it will be good. We'll do something about it. Okay, thank you, Mr. Tony, for that your contribution to this tonight. Can we have can we have more people to make um, their own contribution now? Please they, introduce yourself. Introduce yourself when you speak. Go on, Mr. Go on, Mr. Yomi. Okay. Good evening. My name is uh, Yomi. Uh, I'm a first time on this platform. Um, I want to say a very big thank you to professor in the house for all the points that they've been able to verify to us as far as the importance of heart in our society is concerned. Uh, I want to buttress what the, Mr. Tony just said about us making government realize the importance of heart in our society and even being part of the curriculum while it is being uh, uh, covered. It's very, very important that that happen. I want to set an, 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 uh, an, uh, an instance of what happened recently. I was part of one art competition. And the art competition, there is a, a, the, the body that organizes that art, art competition. They normally do it for both science, uh, PA, P, P, A, PE, and other subjects. But, and those, all those other subjects, when they will ever come for second or third, they go home with something substantial. But when it's got to heart, that was when they feel the, the, the whoever comfort or second or third should go home with just certificate of participant. That, 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 that really explains what we're talking about. 
that art is being looked down upon within the circle of our education. And another thing I want to let us look at is also we should look inward ourselves. Are we in a way contributing to the way people look at arts? What I notice is that arts is dying in basic educational level. And the reason for that is because most time artists feel they don't have much work to do if they are to handle, they are to handle secondary school purpose. That is why in arts, I mean, in primary, in primary level, art is dying. And also, the way we teachers handle art determines whether children will develop art, I mean, we develop interest for art or not. Just like what uh, the way Madame said, Madame said, it starts with us. It's 10% creativity and 90% hard work. So the question is, are we teachers ourselves? Are we making art interesting to this children? The way we handle it, the way we go about it. Like what he said, I, 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 I free from Yaba Tech. It's a wonderful place. But there are some lecturers that at the point I asked myself, what is it? I'm here to learn. What is the meaning of this? You enter class, you just you, you write on the board, you just say, hey, go and do something, go ahead. And the question is, what is this thing? How do I go about it? I mean, there are some things that should inform that, 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 that I need to know concerning that particular thing. It's very common with some of our hard teachers. And it makes even the whole locals look at it like, what are they really doing? You understand what I'm saying? So even we ourselves that find ourselves in this particular circle, that as an art educators, we should ask ourselves, the way I undo this particular subject, this course, because to me, this course is a ministry. I don't have to climb the pulpit before I am preaching, before I can say I'm under a ministry. I am molding a life towards a particular direction. So the way I mold that life, the way I go about it, determines whether the child will respond positively to it or not. So we too, as art teachers, we need to ask ourselves, the way I handle this subject, do I make even outsiders, the onlookers, do I make them see that something great do I make them say we should be part of it? Even the children I'm handling, most especially in public school, I mean, in, in, in basic education, the way I handle it, do I make them develop interest in heart? So these are the things I want us to, to look at as, uh, as colleagues. Just like uh, uh, Professor has said, that it is 10% of creativity or talent and 90% of hard work. So we need to check ourselves as articles as well. And we need to also focus on basic uh, level of education because just like Professor said, he said you cannot, you cannot change an adult and adult is already formed. So if you want to really inculcate that interest in heart, in them, it should start from the basic level. And we need, we have problem with that. As in teachers really, you know, handling uh, arts the way it should be handled in basic, basic level. I handle primary school and that is where I'm talking about this. Thank you so much. Thank you so much sir, for your contribution. Now we have more. Professor Okunlola, would you like to contribute to that, sir? Yes, yes. Good evening, sir. Go ahead, sir. Are you hearing me? Yes, sir, we can. Okay. I want to thank the presenter for a well done job. But we've been rejoicing at education. We've been saying all good things about education. But the present situation now calls for some kind of coming together. Art education is a problem. It's a problem. And this thing started from 1969, when there was this uh, curriculum conference where they decided to merge other creative fields with visual arts. That's where she started having problems in higher education. Drama, fine art, uh, dance were all merged together. Whereas visual education on its own, we have different aspects of visual education, visual art education. Like painting, like sculpture, uh, design, and so on. 
Now, you will say, so go to Obale. And they can buy it. That is when the, the, the trusses cannot get down. You still want it to be rolled up. In that sense, yes. if I imagine other creative fields with visual arts, it is actually affecting the field negatively. And uh, wh why do you come about this problem? How do you come about this problem? Because John like some others previously have noted that people supposed to be part of the curricular planning were sided out. Take for example now, in senior secondary school, at senior secondary school level, level now, you have Kai and I, we have photography, they, they call it entrepreneurship. Four created. Visual art is gender useless. So if a, a, a student has to take uh, just one aspect, which is just a uh, topic in heart, he say he has a, uh, how about drawing? He says, what I want now is help to stop drawing. If there's a way we can form a formidable team, not like the speaker said the other time, to pressurize government to restructure our education, that is when we can achieve the goal. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you so much for your submission, sir. Can we have more people to contribute to this tonight? Uh, Mr. Jose, would you like to? Yeah, okay, yes. you came a bit late. We, okay, you can go ahead. Somebody is about to speak. Okay, go ahead, sir. We okay, can hear you. Can I go ahead? We can hear you. Yeah, okay. go ahead, sir. We can hear you. We can hear you. Good evening, everybody. It's exciting to yeah, it's exciting to be here again tonight, and I'm really proud of us. I've I've been inspired by all we have been saying, but I just want to uh, make this little contribution that for me, I I think we've been we have been diagnosing this uh, sickness. We have identified the problem. What I think we should do now is to start providing solution. What should we do? What should we do to arrest the situation? What should we do to change the narrative? What should we do to turn the tide uh, about this, um, uh, the way art is being treated in our country or in the society? For me, I think what we need to be discussing now is the solution. We have identified the problems enough. For I me, mean, we already know that this is a trend. And how do we change the trend? Is what I think we need to be talking about now. Last week, I remember I suggested that we need to go to the media. We need to go to uh, TV houses, radio. We need, to, we need to launch out and go for something like campaign. We need to... Uh, come together and um, put our resources together and make sure that we, we launch a deliberate campaign, a, a very serious campaign against this trend. So that is one um, solution that I profiled la last week. And I think what we need to be talking about now is what and what should we do to curb the, the, the trend and to turn the tide. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir, for that uh, contribution. Thank you so much, sir. Can we have one or two more contributions before we ask uh, Dr. Tijani? Oh, Dr. Tijani is, we are losing, uh, okay, okay. She's back now. Dr. Tijani is back. Ma, I was just thinking we should just take one one or two more contributions, then we have you to respond to all. Then we, we close it for today. Anyone can omit his or a mic to speak. Good evening, House. Good evening. Good evening, Mr. House. Lani. Good evening, sir. You are welcome. We yeah. can hear you. Good evening. Yeah, good evening, please. Um, really, I've been in. I came here a little 20 
minute late. But I've been enjoying what others have been talking about. But uh, my main opinion is that uh, I supported my professor, the last, uh, my last colleagues that I talked last. Uh, really, we, are, we, we have identified the problem. We have, we, are, we have the trend down. And I, I believe any action we are going to maybe take an action uh, our generation, I believe it to not be caught. And I'm sure uh, uh, I know Nobolu will not be happy with us because he has laid down very good selfless to even promote art when there's nothing like art. But now there's art and we are not really trying to uh, put the the, 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 put the square peg on the square O. Really, a lot of stuff came in. I've spoiled the trend. Imagine some artists. They will just they will just call themselves artists. I'm artists. I'm Gabby artists. I will just look at them. They will just go and learn something. And say, I'm artists. Every can have just comes in, and there's no control at all. And it's high time. We need to just control it. You can't call yourself a medical doctor. You cannot, except you have to go to the to, 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 to the conventional stuff and you have to go rigorously to, to the exam and go. But artists, anybody from you don't believe that we are talented and gifted and artists and so on and so forth. It's our time we just look at how can we move forward. Not just be talking. I've listened to a lot of people, but you know, at the end of the day. Even at, at the end of today, we are going to forget about it. This trend is still there. Please, what can we do at least to change it from our own head? Thank you very much, us. Okay, thank you so much for your contribution. Um, thank you so much for everybody that have contributed to this talk tonight. Okay, Mr. Aladimeji, you want to speak? So I'm go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Um, I just want to uh, draw attention to certain gray areas and at the same time cover uh, the little solution that I believe that uh, if we can use it to uh, mitigate the situation on ground, uh, maybe we will be able to at least say so. Uh, in the first place, the attitude of our member, that is the those who are in the field of art. Look at uh, this beautiful program being put in place right now. And at the end of the day, Look at the number of uh, artists or the heart educators that are on the platform tonight is a pointer to the fact that it's as if we are not serious. So it posts a lot of uh, unseriousness to even the, 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 the people that are concerned, you know, I mean, the stakeholders. Because I want to believe that if medical our uh, practitioners call for this kind of platform. Uh, the number of uh, 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 personnel that we're going to have or the, uh, or the medical doctors that we're going to have on the platform tonight will be so much more than what we are having now. That is one area. We are not serious about our, our area of, uh, I mean, the, the, our constituency, which is uh, hard fit. That's one. Secondly, um, I equally want to draw our attention to the fact that it is high time that we start lobbying from our local level to any level now to educate people. And at the same time, lobby the senators, those, those of us who can, who have the key that unlock the doors of senators and uh, uh, honorable at the House of Rep to please link us up with those senators and uh, uh, honorable in the House of Representatives so that we can be our mind. It will equally be a kudos to them if we can put things right this time around. Then number three, it is high time we embrace community voluntary service whereby we find time as uh, Honorable Lu did, because he laid that precedent. But after him, we are only concerned about ourselves alone. Nobody is ready to, uh, you know, make any sacrifice. 
and this is not good for us at all. Uh, if only we can, you know, do this, I want to believe that uh, the tide will change on our own part. Then the, the last one is this mistake that uh, uh, Dr. Bayo from Moped mentioned the other time. The mistake was there, and even some of our members, the, the core members that we believe they are supposed to know better, even support, supported this move of merging all these uh, areas together as one, and is equally causing problem. If it were to be interdisciplinary uh, uh, of a team, whereby, you know, we, 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 we enter... Uh, dependence on each other, it will, it, it will have been a different case. But the situation whereby music, theater, uh, other things have been much visual hearts in one place, ah, it, it is a terrible thing. It, it is a, a, a must address issue. It is a must address issue because professor, uh, a professor where uh, sometimes ago, I think about uh, maybe six or ten, uh, uh, six or seven years ago, at uh, Kogi, you know, told us the reason for CCA as at that time, that at the elementary stage, all these things were being matched together in order to develop the uh, creative in, uh, 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 instinct of the, 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 um, uh, I mean, the kids that are just coming into the, in, into the area of creativity, uh, you know, to help them develop their own uh, this thing. But at the end of the day, the whole thing is just being messed up, and then we don't even know where we are going now. Uh, lastly, I want to believe, I want to ask a question. Is the curriculum we are operating in Nigeria today has anything to do with the need of our society? If no, if no is the answer, then something very, very important needed to be done now. Thank you so much. So thank you, Mr. Ladimeji. Okay, Dr. Uh, Tijani, can you please uh, add, uh, attend to all the questions and contributions that have been made so far, Ma? You can unmute yourself now, Ma. Dr. Tijani. Yes, okay. thank you very much. Thank you very much. Um, yes. The questions are quite like jump exams. <laughs> and I've been writing furiously. I'm not sure I can answer all the questions. I don't have, I'm not equipped to answer all the questions. But I will see those, the few I can attempt. I will try them. Please bear with me. Um, the first speaker actually talked about the fact that uh, Nigerians are actually patronizing art. There is no doubt that we are patronizing us because we are not working naked. Every one of us is dressed and we're all dressed in clothes made for, right from the, the spinning of the yarn to coloring the yarn, to designing the, the designs, to cutting them into patterns, to sewing them up and actually putting them on. We're all in there, we all sit on chairs, we live in houses, we drive cars. Whether you are Buhari or you're anybody, you are driving in cars all around. And these are all results of art. But we're talking about actually using aesthetics in your own environment. That is putting artworks in your house for the purpose of art appreciation, for the purpose of enhancing the beauty of your environment. It could be in form of paintings, sculptures, ceramics, all sorts of wall hangings. It could be religious, it could be for religious content, it could be for all sorts. And uh, th this is an area that we are all lacking behind. And that's a whole lot of uh, thousands of professionals that are rendered uh, jobless. Professionals, people who are trained to actually do these works. And um, it is only when we appreciate artworks that we can go to museums. <coughs> Let me finish first, please that we can go, sorry, please, is the generator, I'm on generator in my house, and they just brought light, but I don't want the generator changed. I want to finish this program first before we change to 
leper. So like I was saying, um, we all patronize at, at different levels. The very one we're talking about today are the visual arts that require that government should put up a legislation whereby everybody actually embraces art. Even if it means putting money there and um, training people on the values of art. Right now, if you go to, for instance, let's take the International Airport at, in Lagos. They have a few art works there. They are quite enhancing, they are quite beautiful, they are quite engaging, they are up to standard, but we need more of such. We need more of such in public places. And uh, the reason we actually direct everything to government in Nigeria is because government is the biggest investor. They are the ones that have the money in this country. And whatever they decide to put their hands into, it actually flourishes. And it will not stop at just putting them there. It will encourage people who see them. People don't know about art in this country. They don't know the functions of art. I listened to my Ghanaian brother speaking earlier that Nigeria and Ghana were like brothers. We are the same. Whatever obtains here, whatever is obtainable here is the same in Ghana, in most cases, to a very large extent. The difference is very minute. So uh, if government takes responsibility, I believe it will, it will, it will ripple down to all the other persons. I would like to thank uh, Dr. Sher Golude for your kind uh, understanding of my presentation. And then uh, my brother, Mr. Ladimeji, or Dr. Ladimeji, should I say, you talked about curriculum uh, review. Uh, the Nigerian curriculum has a lot of problem at all educational level. Because one, uh, we don't review them on time. When we do review them, government bottlenecks, keep them bottled up somewhere. I'll give you a very, uh, uh, I'll give you an instance that I experienced myself. You know this, uh, uh, is it uh, 336 that we're running? Or is it 633 that we're running right now? That is the six for the primary school and the three for the lower uh, uh, secondary school while the other three is for the upper secondary school. The universal basic education is supposed to be a nine year seamless program. No graduating from the six year to three years. So it's a nine three system that we are operating. That is the first nine years of education. It's supposed to be free. It's supposed to be seamless. It's supposed to be compulsory. I've been to several schools where it is not made compulsory. It is not seamless. People are still graduating from primary school to go into JSS class. So you find how many years now since 2004 that we've been on this program? And this is 2020. We have still not affected it. It is just still in name. People are still ca carrying primary certificates everywhere in this country. Why is that so? This is government uh, problem. It's only God that knows how he's going to cure us of that. Apart from the advocacy group that I'm advocating for, because government put legislation in place, they do not police it. You can't make laws without, even in our own homes, if you make laws for your children and you don't police it, they will not follow it. So our laws are not being followed, they are not being actualized, they are not being practicalized. We are just making those laws properly just to fulfill all righteousness that we have done them. Millennium Development Goals, they've come and gone. What, what are our achievements? Apart from seeing them on paper, go to the primary school, they are still the same way that we knew they've been. No improvements, nothing has happened to them. And nobody is questioning anybody. Nobody is policing it. So you find that we are just where we are. We have started the... SDGs now. It's supposed to end in uh, 2030. Let's see how far we go with that. Now, um, science actually costs more than art, but somehow because they can have Ministry of Science and Technology and pumping money there, they believe more in that than in art. Unfortunately, when money even comes to art, our other brothers in the performing area, they are the ones that are recognized. I don't want to go into that politics before somebody will shoot me. So that's that area. Our government is not serious. I, I actually agree with that. But it's not only government that is not serious. I'll take on your last contribution regarding our communities, regarding our going to actually uh, volunteer. I have personally, in Abuja here, gone to volunteer in the secondary school on my own because my husband lives in Abuja. So I shuttle 
Zaria and Abuja. Every Friday, I'm in Abuja. So I went to a school close to my residence and said, look, look, I'll come here every Friday and give you my Friday day. Just arrange your curriculum. I mean, your timetable in such a way that I could be available in all your classes on a Friday. The proprietor is not a, is not a, the teacher, is the proprietor of the school that told me that, Madam, please, you have to wait. I'm going to discuss with the PTA. It is what the PTA say now that I'll get back to you. I told them, don't give me material. Because of my being a British citizen, whenever I'm there, I come in with books, I come with, with free material. I say, don't give me anything. I'll bring my own materials to teach these children. Up till date, this matter is over three, four years ago. The man never got back. When we met again, I asked him, and then people started telling me that he's worried that I may charge money later, that how much will he pay me? I'm not going to charge any money. But I, like Jack Ma says that uh, poor people, they don't like free things. When you make anything free, the poor man is suspicious of you. So we're going to volunteer, has his own uh, shortcomings. So you also said is our, our curriculum, are they relevant? Well, if you build a curriculum and it stays in government and for 10 years, what relevance are you expecting when they release it after 10 years? It is no longer relevant because situation has overtaken it. As of today, in the other parts of the world, a lot of uh, subjects are taught on computers, in classrooms, printing machines are kept in classes for students to use. We don't have any of these. So when you incorporate one type of printer this year and it's in 10 years time, when that printer has become obsolete, that's when it will be approved. And they will say somebody will supply it. When the person brings the uh, printer, the printer is not working. So corruption is seriously embedded in this country and it, uh, it is affecting uh, everything that we are doing. Yeah, my brother Hamza from Ghana is saying that art should be put in all the courses across board. I totally agree with you, 100%. Um, Mr. Tony said we should make government realize the importance of art in our society. I spoke extensively about that. I agree with you totally. I wanted us to look at museums. Museums, it is only when governments decide to buy into art that our museums can be relevant. Our museums in this country, they are not relevant for anything. Nobody visits the museum. In the UK, for instance, where, where I know I have lived for many years, if you go to Tate Modern, People queue up to enter. If you go to Museum of Natural History, I've been to Museum of Natural History a few times. I queue for two hours. By the time I'm able to enter, the museum has closed. Mm -hmm. That is how important the community, the people consider these things to be. They go there for entertainment. They go there for education. While we in this country, our museums are just there. They are like relics. We don't visit them. We don't consider them relevant. Government is not improving them. We are not putting anything there. What do we need to put there? We need to put some of our courses there. We need to put education there. We need to put entertainment there. That's why people will go there. We need to hear that our government functionaries are visiting our museums. We need to have them there. That's the only way people will go there. But if it is just for it to be there, nobody will go. I don't want to travel. Uh, 200 kilometers carrying people's children to go and look at a museum. And when they get there, they are not bringing anything back of relevance. So why would they go there? They don't even have modern works that people want to go and see. Every artist is represented in the British Museum, the Tate Modern, and so many other museums and galleries abroad. But we have that. We don't even have, we don't have a national gallery where we can keep our works and say, this is our gallery for Nigeria. We do not have that. So we get a lot of problem there. Um, Yes, one of my brothers said, our teachers are not making the subject interesting to the students. I agree totally, 110%, if there's anything like that. The fault of students not having interest in art is right at the doormat of the teachers. And I do not blame the teachers too much as well, because it all comes with the training you have received. You know, at some point, people were not getting jobs. So people just branch into areas just because it is the available job they can do, not because they have the training. Teaching requires training. It's like becoming a painter or a sculptor. You need to be trained to become a painter. You need to be trained to become a sculptor. You also need to be trained to be a teacher. It is not a job that anybody can just go in. That's why uh, somebody spoke about Yaba College of Tech. I taught there for 16 years, and I rose to the level of the chief lecturer there, so I know a lot of my colleagues are lacking in that area. I'm sure some of them are listening, and they'll probably crucify me. But facts must be told. You, I mean, there are skills involved in teaching. 
it is not uh, like cooking soup that anybody can say they can cook soup. You have to learn it if you want to be do the job. And then some people are actually in the wrong job. I thank God I am in the right job. Some people chose teaching job for me when I was young. I hated them and I hated the job. I didn't want to be a teacher. I feel too intelligent. I feel I could do something else. But I thank God I went into teaching. Because the ability to talk and convince people is necessary if you want to be a teacher. You cannot just come to the classroom. You can't talk. You can't convince people. You can't carry people along. You can't make the class interesting. So what will you be teaching? Nothing. Very few people will follow you. So this is the problem. Uh, and I thank uh, the professor that spoke that the problem of uh, art started as far back as uh, 1969 when this major took place of bringing everything under one umbrella and calling it art. And that continues to be the problem. It is still the problem till tomorrow. I have taught in secondary school myself, and I know that the 40 or 45 minutes given for art is not enough for you to even prepare yourself before you galvanize into the action of teaching. And I mean, art is a skill development thing. It's not something, it's not mathematics, it's not English. You cannot learn it. It's, it doesn't have formula. So it requires that you give it a lot of time. It's only when you give it time that you can actually make a progress. But the last two speakers, are, they've talked about the fact that we've actually enumerated so many points and the next thing is to chat a way forward. I definitely agree that we need to chat a way forward. But I also need, I also feel that we need to exhaust all possible points. Then we now chat our way. The reason is so that we don't make a mistake, so that we don't give up along the way and then we don't achieve what we want to achieve. We need to actually have a plan of action well articulated, enumerated procedure that we want to follow. And we must have a picture of where we are going right from, right from the start. We know where we are going, we know what we want to achieve, then we chat away on how to achieve it. I know it requires a lot of money, this is Nigeria. Money must change and for anything to happen. And as it, as, it, as it is now, we don't even have money. I mean, I don't know if there's a group in place, I don't know if you guys have been contributing uh, money, excuse me, or whether you've actually mapped out some people that you want to meet to sponsor this program, whether within Nigeria or outside Nigeria. I don't know whether you want to go there as an NGO or, or as an academic body or, or just as a group of uh, concerned Nigerians. These are things that I think we need to, to look into before we can well, approach government. Don't forget that this same thing, they are, they are us by the government. First year, I pass some of us here are those that we are going to meet there. And one thing about artists is that we are the ones doing ourselves. We artists are the ones doing ourselves. I have discovered this from experience. We are the ones who create barricade for ourselves. And that's why we are not progressing. I know last week, my husband is an accountant and he works with Nigerian federal government. He was in a meeting of uh, the budget office or something. And there were over 600 people in that Zoom meeting. How, how many are we here? From my record here, we have 24 people here, despite the adverts. In fact, somebody brought the poster of this, my presentation, to my department's WhatsApp page. I saw it there. How many are we on that WhatsApp page? If, if one over four, a quarter of us on that page should attend this presentation, it would be more than this number. But artists, we are the ones doing ourselves. We do not support ourselves. I don't know whether we want people from medical association to come and fight for us, or people from the Nigerian Bar Association to come and fight for us. I don't know. We don't push ourselves. This presentation was put on SNA Lagos State. It was put on SNA National. How many people are here from SNA? None. So if we don't support ourselves, who will support ourselves? Who will fight for us? So we continue to remain mediocre. Nobody wants to listen to us. Mediocrity is not welcomed by anybody. Everybody wants to see people who are shining, people who are stars, and we are not stars. I tend, at ICANN conference in Abuja here, when you go there, you won't have space to sit down. They come in their thousands. They come with their wives. My husband is an accountant, I've attended many. They come with their families. It's holiday for them once in a year. Every September in this country, as far back as 1980 something, I've been attending ICANN conference. That is the way it is till tomorrow. They go there and mass. They have fun. Their children want to become accountants because they see what is going on there. So what are we doing as artists? I'm saying all of this to push us forward, to make us take decisions, to make us steadfast, to make us have continuity. This thing that we have started now, it should not end. It should not stop. It should grow. 
Bring your people, bring your friends, bring all the artists that you know, encourage them to come. It is only when we are many that we can actually have an advocacy that can push government. A few of us, they will not listen to us. Thank you very much for giving me this opportunity. Wow, 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 wow. I'm clapping from here, ma. Wow, wonderful, ma. Wonderful. Thank you so much, ma. Dr. Adele, you can go ahead, sir. I'm out now. Thank you very much. Thank you. <laughs> okay, Dr. Shagun Lude would like to say something, and with that, we'll close. And uh, before then, I would like to say that we have a form right now. We have a survey online on value of art education and importance of art education. We can encourage more people to fill it. This week, too, we we'll also have another survey on the solutions to an advocacy that we need to take for for to to spread this uh, uh the next course of action now is solution and we are going to like ask everybody to 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 make their suggestion what do you think are the solution we are going to have another survey this week for that so i'm going to we are going to combine the two survey the importance of the value of art so far we have 62 responses i believe just like dr Titani has said i believe it can be more than that we are, we are more than 62 art educators on the continent of Africa. We are not just talking about Nigeria alone. We are also, we, find, we, got, we realize that we have the same reality in, on the continent of Africa, and we all can participate in this. So we are going to send out those surveys again. I want to say thank you to everybody that has contributed their own thoughts to that survey. We are going to have the second one now on solutions to all of this. Uh, so, uh, Dr. Shegunlide, you can speak on, sir. Uh, thank you so much. I once again would commend Dr. Tudani for doing an excellent work on, on this topic. Um, it's actually refreshing, you know, because we have the survey out to find out what the value of art is. And she's helped us to list probably all the values I can think of and dissected a couple more by bringing in the topic of technology and art, um, which is one very important thing for me as a person, you know, to see how that synthesis works. She's been able to help us see it. Um, to my brother Ayodele, I know that um, we're in a hurry to get to listing what this um, proposal will be so that we can go to the government and start talking to people about art. But I believe that going through this session is very helpful because if we do not list the values, if we do not see what the problems are and then come up with a list of proposals and suggestions, we will not be effective. So it's time well spent that we have done today. I want to say that one of the things that jumped out at me during the discussion time is the fact that we, as educators, we have a lot of work to do. Um, the mention of volunteering to go teach in different schools is something that I think we individually need to look at, but I do understand that we all have our work in the places where we are placed and um, we have our regular teaching jobs, we have our regular studio, we have our extracurricular activities. And it's just another word of encouragement that if we find an area that's close to us where we can help improve the quality of art in someone's life or in a group's life, um, we should do it. I don't want to ask us how many of us uh, volunteer in a place of worship to do art classes for the kids there. But that's ample opportunity for us to um, elevate art because they use it in our places of worship, um, not only to decorate the altar and the backgrounds, um, things that are done on the floor. It is just part of worship as well, if we want to think of the spiritual aspect of art, but I won't go there today. Um, I wanted to also mention that, um, yes, we can go um, to the government, but we must have, as we have 
a list of what is wrong, we should have a list of what we can do about it. One of the things that was mentioned was anybody can call themselves an artist today. Yes, I agree it is not right. Here in Canada, we have methods of evaluating an artist. For one, if you go to school and you come out with your certificate or diploma or your um, degree, then you can call yourself an artist. And for graphic design, if you didn't graduate in graphic design, um, because art is a visual, well, I'm just speaking generally, visual art is something that you could pick up on your own. You have some people who naturally can become artists. Um, even if you have people like that who are very good in art, we still need to look at your portfolio and what you've done and also give you a guideline as to the ethics of the profession and all those things so that you will be able to abide by those as you practice your art. So you can't just go and call yourself I'm a graphic designer. That's why you see a certification next to my name that says CGD, meaning Certified Graphic Designer by the national body here. So those are some of the things that I think would come up in the course of refining what art is, who an artist is. And I'm glad that you mentioned that teaching art is not something you just do. You have to be trained, yes. Even at the university level here before I could teach, I had to go into a course called Teaching the Teacher. So we are all going to learn how to teach so that we can teach others. Anyway, my uh, comments today are more of commendations. First for our speaker today, Dr. Tijani, and it's very good to hear all the comments that have come after that. I would encourage us to keep the faith and make sure that we participate whenever we see a gathering like this and also promote it among our friends. Be assured that I have a few people coming to join us. I'm lining them up right now and they will be here. So that's my part. Thank you. So thank, thank you, you so, so much, much, sir. I'm, I'm also, um, I'm clapping for, for you and Dr. Tijani right here. And uh, we'll be looking forward to those presenters, Dr. Oluide. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Dr. Tijani, thank you so much for everything tonight. I'm clapping for my end. And I hope others will also help me join me in clapping for, for her and just to have an appreciation of what she has done to, with us tonight. Thank you so much, Ma. We hope to have more of you among us. And I want to say thank you to, so much to everybody that has been so persistent with this gathering. This gathering is, all of, is for all of us. It is, it is for all of us. And we can, to, together we can make that change. We can, we can actually affect the, the situation of, uh, 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 sorry, Somebody, somebody's mic is on. I'm trying to off that. Okay, I think it's better now. Okay, so I want to say thank you to everybody that have been persistent with this uh, uh, gathering. So, so from, right from the day one, some of us have been here. Mr. Benga has always been here. Pastor Felix has always been here. Uh, uh, Mr. Uh, Suluka as well, and so many other people here. Mr. Yusuf, Dr. Yusuf from uh, from the north, and uh, Jose from Brazil, and so many other people has always been persistent in with this program. I just want to say thank you so, so much for coming and joining us. And together, really, together we can actually change the narrative of art education on the continent of Africa, not just Nigeria, not just Ghana, but on the on the continent of Africa. Thank you so much. With this, I would like to say thank you, and I want to say good night. Then we'll meet next week. Please invite someone. Next week, invite someone, and we are going to have more presentation next week. Thank you, and God bless you. Bye for now. <laughs>